Shalom, shalom, beloved. It's me, Angel, another saint. Hi, my babies. Hi, my big kiddos. I love all of you. None of them more than the other. All of you are special. All of you are one of a kind. There will never, ever be another one of you, my babies. And all five of you were given unto me that I may try to impact your lives with my life, my babies. Listen and see that I am only trying to teach you Abba's ways, that you may serve Abba. Listen, my babies. I love you, beloved. And all you that are against righteousness, may Abba have mercy on y'all. In Yahusha's name, Amen. What are we going to read? I wanted, I wanted to finish the story that I was reading a few days ago of that, uh, That woman warrior Who was she? It was Judith uh, I don't remember what verses did I read but I want to say it was seven through thirteenth. So I will I will read I will start from the beginning from chapter one and I will read on until I start to remember what I have read already then I will stop and then I will make or try I'll, I'll try to make another video but maybe I'll try to read the beginning and the ending of Judith in this video since in a video that I did a few days ago uh, or weeks ago I only read the middle of the story uh, it's pouring beloved we're supposed to get two inches of rain I heard here in this land where I am currently at here we go chapter one of Judith Abba let this be for you Abba an act of obedience, Abba, of us to read your word, Abba. Abba, an act of our love for you, Abba. Abba, that we may be edified and growing in your paths, Abba, that we may be able to teach our, our babies and our beloved and those who don't seek you, Abba, that in case they stumble upon this channel that they see Yaba how we long for you that they may long for you as well and and that you may have mercy on them Abba in Yahusha's name Amen here we go beloved the book of Yahudith Judith 1 it reads In the twelfth year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, who reigned in Nineveh, the great city, in the days of Arbashad, Arpachshad, which reigned over the Modai in Exbatain, and built Ecbatane walls round about of stones hewn three cubits broad and six cubits long 
and made the height of the wall seventy cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and set the towers thereof upon the gates of it a hundred cubits high, and the breadth thereof in the foundation threescore cubits. And he made the gates thereof even gates that were raised to the height of seventy cubits, and the breadth of them was forty cubits, for the going forth of his mighty armies, and for the setting in array of his footmen. Even in those days, King Nebuchadnezzar made war with King Arkpakshad in the great plain, which is the plain in the borders of Riu. And there came unto him all they that dwelt in the hill country, and all that dwelt by Pirath and Shidigel and Hidaspes, and the plain of Arioch, the king of the Elamines, and very many nations of the sons of Shilod assembled themselves to the battle. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king of Ashur, sent unto all that dwelt in Persia, and to all that dwelt westward, and to those that dwelt in Cilicia, and Damascus, and Lebanon, and Antilibenus, and to all that dwelt upon the sea coast, and to those among the nations that were of Carmel, and Gilead, and the higher Gal Galio, and the great plain of Jisrael, and to all that were in Shamron, and the cities thereof, and beyond the Jordan, unto Jerusalem, and Betain, and Kiliub, and Kadesh, and the river of Mitzrayim, and Tokphenic, and the Ramesik, and all the land of Goshen, until ye beyond, until ye come beyond Tanis and Memphis, and to all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim, until ye come to the borders of Cush. <coughs> but all, excuse me, beloved, but all the inhabitants of the land made light of the commandment of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Ashur, Neither went they with him to the battle, for they were not afraid of him. Yea, he was before them as one man. And they sent away his ambassadors from them without effect and with disgrace. Therefore Nebuchadnezzar was very angry with all this country and swore by his throne and kingdom that he would surely be avenged upon all those coasts of Cilicia and Damascus and Aram, and that he would slay with the sword all the inhabitants of the land of Moab and the children of Ammon and all Yehud, Yahud, the region of the southern kingdom of Yehuda, a place in Yasharel. And all that were in Mitzrayim, till ye come to the borders of the two seas. Then he marched in battle array with his power against King Arpachshad in the seventeenth year, and he prevailed in his battle. For he overthrew all the power of Arkpakshad, and all his, his horsemen, and all his chariots.
and became Adoni of his citizens, and came unto Egbertain, and took the towers, and spoiled the streets thereof, and turned the beauty thereof into shame. He took also Arpachshad in the mountains of Reu, and smote him through with his spears, and destroyed him utterly that day. So he returned afterward to Nineveh, both he and all his company of sundry nations being a very great multitude of men of war. And there he took ease and banqueted both he and his army a hundred and twenty days. Chapter 2, beloved, my babies, and all you who have ears to hear. And in the eighteenth year, the two and twentieth day of the first month, there was talk in the house of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Ashur, that he should, as he said, avenge himself on all the earth. So he called unto him all his officers and all his nobles, and communicated with them his secret counsel, and concluded the afflicting of the whole earth of his own mouth. Then they decreed to destroy all flesh that did not obey the commandment of his mouth. And when he had ended his counsel, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Ashur, called Halofernes, the chief captain of his army, which was next unto him, and said unto him, Thus says the great king, the Adoni of the whole earth. Behold, you shall go forth from my presence and take with you men that trust in their own strength, of footmen a hundred and twenty thousand, and the number of horses with their riders twelve thousand. And you shall go against all the west country, because they disobeyed my commandment. And you shall declare unto that they prepare for me earth and water, for I will go forth in my wrath against them, and will cover the whole face of the earth with the feet of my army, and I will give them for a spoil unto them, so that their slain shall fill their valleys and brooks, and the river shall be filled with their dead, till it overflow. And I will lead them captives to the utmost parts of all the earth. You, therefore, shall go forth, take beforehand for me, all their coasts, and if they yield themselves unto you, you shall reserve them for me till the day of their punishment. But concerning them that rebel, let not your eye spare them, but put them to the slaughter and spoil them wheresoever you go. For as I live, and by the power of my kingdom, whatsoever I have spoken, that will I do by my hand. And take heed that, your, that you transgress none of the commandments of your Adoni, but accomplish them fully, as I have commanded you, and defer not to do them. Then Holofernes went forth from the presence of his Adoni, and called all the governors and captains and the officers of the army of Ashur, and he mustered the chosen men for the battle, as his Adoni had commanded him, 
unto a hundred and twenty thousand and twelve thousand archers on horseback. And he ranged them as a great army is ordered for the war. And he took camels and dasses for their carriages, a very great number, and the sheep and oxen and goats without number for their provision, and plenty of victual for every man of the army, and very much gold and silver out of the king's house. Then he went forth, and all his power to go before King Nebuchadnezzar in the voyage, and to cover all the face of the earth westward with their chariots and horsemen and their chosen footmen. A great number also sundry countries came with them like locusts, and like the sand of the earth, for the multitude was without number. And they went forth of Nineveh, three days' journey toward the plain of Bechtleth, and pitched from Bechtleth, Leth near the mountain which is at the left hand of the upper Cilicia. Then he took all his army, his footmen and horsemen and chariots, and went from thence into the hill country, and destroyed Fud and Ludi, Ludi, and spoiled all the children of Rassus. And the children of Yasharel, which were toward the wilderness at the south of the land of the Keli Yanim. Then he went over Perath and went through Aram Naharim and destroyed all the high cities that were upon the river Arbanai till ye come to the sea. And he took the borders of Cilicia, and killed all that resisted him, and came to the borders of Japheth, which were toward the Negev, over against Arav. He compassed also all the children of Midian, and burned up their tabernacles, and spoiled their sheepcoats. Then he went down into the plain of Damascus in the time of wheat harvest, and burnt up all their fields, and destroyed their flocks and herds. Also he spoiled their cities, and utterly wasted their countries, and smote all their young men with the edge of the sword. Therefore the fear and dread of him fell upon the inhabitants of the sea coasts, which were in Zidon and Zor, and them that dwelt in Ker and Osina, and all that dwelt in Yemen, and they that dwelt in Ashdod and Ashkelon feared him greatly. Chapter 3, Beloved of Yehudith, of Judith. So they sent ambassadors unto, treat, unto him to treat of peace, saying, Behold, we, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, the great king, lie before you. Use us, as shall be good in your sight. Behold, our houses, and all our places, and all our fields of wheat, and flocks, and herds, and all that lodges of our tents lie before your face. Use them as it please you. Behold, even our cities and the inhabitants thereof are your servants. 
Come and deal with them as seem good unto you. So the man came to Heliphernes and declared unto him after this manner. Then came he down toward the sea coast, both he and his army, and set garrisons in the high cities, and took out of them chosen men for aid. So they and all the country round about received them with garlands, with dances, and with timbrels. Death is better than compromise, beloved. Yet he did cast down their frontiers and cut down their Asherah poles, for he had decreed to destroy all the Elohim of the land, that all nations should worship Nebuchadnezzar only, and that all tongues and tribes should call upon him as Elohim. Also he came over against Yisrael, near unto Yahuda, over against the great strait of Yahuda. And he pitched between Giva and Scythopolis, and there he tarried a whole month, that he might gather together all the carriages of his army. Chapter 4, Beloved, my children, and all you who dare to come to Abba, he will help you all. Now the children of Yasharel that dwelt in Yahuda heard all that Heliphernes, the chief captain of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Ashur, had done to the nations. And after what manner he had spoiled all their temples and brought them to naught, therefore they were exceedingly afraid of him and were troubled for Jerusalem and for the temple of Yahuwah Elohim. For they were newly returned from the captivity and all the people of Yahuda were lately gathered together, and the vessels and the altar and the house were sanctified after the profanation. Therefore they sent into all the coasts of Shemron, and the villages, and to Beit Shoron, and Belmen, and Jericho, and to Shoba and Desora, and to the valley of Shalem, and passed themselves, and possessed themselves beforehand of all the tops of the high mountains, and fortified the villages that were in them, and laid up victuals for the provision of war, for their fields were of late reaped. And Yerushalayim, nope, and Yahuyakim, the high priest, which was in those days in Jerusalem, wrote to them that dwelt in Beit Olia and Betomethayim, which is over against Jisrael, toward the open country near Dothayim charging them to keep the passages of the hill country, for, the, for by them there was an entrance into Yahuda, and it was easy to stop them that would come up, because the passage was straight, for two men at the most. And the children of Yasharel did as Yahuyakim the high priest had commanded them, with the ancients of all the people of Yasharel, which dwelt at Jerusalem. 
Then every man of Yasharel cried to Elohim with great fervency and with great vehemency did they humble their souls, both they and their women and their children and their cattle and every stranger and hireling and their servants bought with money put sackcloth upon their loins. Thus every man and woman and the little children and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the temple and cast ashes upon their heads and spread out their sackcloth before the face of Yahweh. Also they put sackcloth about, about the altar and cried to the Elohim of Yasharel and with one consent earnestly that he would not give their children for a prey. Oh, is that not our prayer today? And their women for a spoil, and the cities of their inheritance to destruction, and the sanctuary to profanation and reproach, and for the nations to rejoice at. So Elohim heard their prayers and looked upon their afflictions. You are so good, Abba. For the people fasted many days in all Yahuda and Jerusalem before the sanctuary of Yahuwah Sebaoth. And Yahuyakim, the high priest, and all the priests that stood before Yahweh, and they which ministered unto Yahweh, had their loins girt with sackcloth, and offered the daily ascending smoke offerings, with the vows and free gifts of the people, and had ashes on their turbans, and cried unto Yahweh with all their power, that he would look upon all the house of Yasharel graciously. Amen. Chapter 5, Beloved Then was it declared to Heliphernes, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, that the children of Yasharel had prepared for war and had shut up the passages of the hill country, and had fortified all the tops of the high hills, and had laid impediments in the champagne countries, wherewith he was very angry, and called all the princes of Moab, and the captains of Ammon, and all the governors of the sea coast. And he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Kenan, who this people is that dwells in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is their power and strength, and what king is set over them, or captain of their army. He's about to find out. And why have they determined not to come and meet me, more than all the inhabitants of the West? Then said Achior, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, let my Adonai now hear a word from the mouth of your servant, and I will declare unto you the truth concerning this people, which dwells near you, and inhabits the hill countries, and there shall no lie come out of the mouth of your servant. This people are descendant of Kasdim of the Kazdim, the Chaldeans, 
the Kasdim or descendants of Kesed, also an astrologer, last if proverbial of that people. Huh. I heard that the Torah is written in the stars, beloved. Okay, uh, verse 7. And they sojourned heretofore in Aram Naharayim because they would not follow the Elohim of their fathers which were in the land of Kasdi. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshipped the Elohim of heaven. Amen. The Elohim whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their Elohim. And they fled into Aram Naharaim. And they sojourned there many days. Then their Elohim commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and with very much cattle. The milk, the land of milk and honey. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Mitzrayim and sojourned there while they were nourished and became there a great multitude so that one could not number their nation. The Hebrews, the Ivries. Therefore the king of Mitzrayim rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring in brick and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their Elohim, and he smote all the land of Mitzrayim with incurable plagues, so that Mitzrayim cast them out of their sight. And Elohim dried the Red Sea before them, and brought them to Mount Sinai and Kadesh Barnea, and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Imurim, and they destroyed by their strength all them of Chesbon, and passing over the garden they possessed all the hill country, and they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Perisi, the Jebusi, and the Shikmi, and all the Girgashim, and they dwelt in that country many days. And while they sinned not before their Elohim, they prospered, because the Elohim that hates iniquity was with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their Elohim was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their Elohim, and are come up from the places where they were scattered, and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now therefore, my Adonai and governor, if there be any error against this people, and they sin against their Elohim, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Adonai now pass by, 
lest their Yahuwah defend them, and their Elohim be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. <clears throat> Amen. And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people standing round about the tent murmured. And the chief men of Holofernes and all that dwelt by the seaside and in Moab spoke that he should kill him. For, say they, we will not be afraid of the face of the children of Yasharel. For, lo, it is a people that have no strength, no power for a strong battle. Now, therefore, Adoni Holofernes, we will go up, and they shall be a prey to be devoured all of all your army. Chapter 6, Beloved, my Mishpoka, and all you who don't fear Abba, listen up. And when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Ashur, said unto Agior and all the Moavim, before all the company of their nations. And who are you, Akior, and the hirelings of Ephraim, that you have prophesied against us today, and have said that we should not make war with the people of Yasharel, because their Elohim will defend them? And who is Elohim, but Nebuchadnezzar. And so does the world say, beloved. He will send his power and will destroy them from the face of the earth and their Elohim shall not deliver them. But we, his servants, will destroy them as one man. For they are not able to sustain the power of our horses. For with them will we tread them underfoot. And their mountains shall be drunken with their blood. And their fields shall be filled with their dead bodies. And their footsteps shall not be able to stand before us. For they shall utterly perish, says King Nebuchadnezzar, Adoni of all the earth, for he said, None of my words shall be in vain. What a foolish, foolish dude. And you, Akior, a hireling of Amon, which have spoken these words in the day of your iniquity, shall see my face no more from this day, until I take vengeance of this nation that come out, that came out of Mitzrayim. And then shall the sword of my army and the multitude of them that serve me pass through your sides, and you shall fall among their slain when I return. Now therefore my servants shall bring you back into the hill country and shall set you in one of the cities of the passages. And you shall not perish till you be destroyed with them. Ha! Huh. And if you persuade yourself in your mind that they shall be taken, let not your countenance fall. I have spoken it, and none of my words shall be in vain. Then Holofernes commanded his servants that waited in his tent to take Achior and bring him to Beit Yulia, 
and deliver him into the hands of the children of Yasharel. <laughs> so his servants took him and brought him out of the camp into the plain, and they went from the midst of the plain into the hill country, and came unto the fountains that were under Beit Yulia. And when the men of the city saw them, they took up their weapons, and went out of the city to the top of the hill, and every man that used a sling kept them from coming up by casting off stones against them. Nevertheless, having gotten privily under the hill, they bound Achior and cast him down, and left him at the foot of the hill, and returned to their Adoni. But Yasharel descended from their city, and came unto him, and tossed him, and brought him to Beulia, and presented him to the governors of the city, which were in those days Uziyahu, the son of Mika. Oh, that reminds me of my, I pray, my son-in-law. He has a kitty. Him and my daughter by the name of Mika. Of the tribe of Shimon, and Shabris the son of Gothaniel, and Charmis the son of Malkiel, and they called together all the ancients of the city, and all their youth ran together, and their women to the assembly, and they sat and they set Achior in the midst of all their people. Then Yuziyahu asked him of that which was done. And he answered and declared unto them the words of the council of Holofernes and all the words that he had spoken in the midst of the princes of Ashur and whatsoever Holofernes had spoken proudly against the house of Yasharel. Behold, people, beloved, my children, and all you who don't fear Abba, listen. Don't speak against us. Then the people fell down and worshipped Elohim and cried unto Elohim, saying, O Yahweh Elohim of heaven, behold, their pride and pity, the low state of our nation, and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto this day. Then they comforted Achior and praised him greatly. And you see, Yahu took him out of the assembly unto his house and made a feast to the elders, and they called on the Elohim of Yasharel all that night for help. First chapter 7, beloved. The next day, Halofernes commanded all his army and all his people which were come to take his part, that they should remove their camp against Beit Yulia, to take aforehand the ascents of the hill country, and to make war against the children of Yasharel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of the men of war was a hundred and seventy thousand footmen, and twelve thousand horsemen beside the baggage and other men, that were afoot among them a very great multitude. I think I already read this chapter, beloved, but let me keep on. Let me make sure, for we should not do anything in doubt, beloved, or it is sin unto us. And they come and they camped in the valley near unto Beulia, by the fountain, and they spread themselves in breath 
over Dothayim, even to Belmayim, and in the length from Beilia unto Cinnamon, yummy Cinnamon, which is over against Yisrael. Now the children of Yasharel, when they saw the multitude of them, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, Now will these men lick up the face of the earth? For neither the high mountains, nor the valleys, nor the hills are able to bear their weight. Now I do remember this, beloved, that I did read this chapter. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon their towers, they remained and watched all that night. But in the second day, Holofernes brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Yasharel, which were Beit-Ulea, in Beit-Ulea. The enemy is always going to try to intimidate us, beloved. Fear of man is not of Ava, beloved and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them, and set garrisons of men of war over them, and he himself removed towards his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab and the captains of the sea coast, and said, Let our Adoni now hear a word that there be not an overthrow in your army. For this people of the children of Yasharel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now therefore, my Adoni, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of your people perish. Remain in your camp, and keep all the men of your army, and let your servants get into their hands the fountain of water which issues forth of the foot of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Beit-Ulea have their water thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city, and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and will camp upon them, to watch that none go out of the city. So they and their women and their children shall be consumed with fire and before the sword come against them. They shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Thus shall you render them an evil reward because they rebelled and met not your person peaceably. And these words pleased Holofernes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken, because they're afraid of death. Scary cats. Well, they have no hope. So the camp of the children of Amen departed and with them five thousand of Ashur, and they pitched in the valley, and took the waters and the fountains of the waters of the children of Yasharel. Then the children of Esau went up with the children of Amen, and camped in the hill country over against Dothaim, and they sent some of them toward the south, and toward the east, over against Ekrabel, which is near unto Kusi, that is, upon the brook Machmer, and the rest of the army of Ashur camped in the plain. 
and covered the face of the whole land, and their tents and carriages were pitched to a very great multitude. Then the children of Yashorel cried unto Yahweh Luhakim, because their heart failed, for all their enemies la had compassed them round about, and there was no way to escape out from among them. Yes, 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 our flesh does get in our way sometimes, beloved. But be of courage, Abba is with us. Remember that always. Verse 20. Thus all the company of Ashur remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, four and thirty days, so that all their vessels of water failed at the inhabitants of Baalia, and the cisterns were emptied, and they had not water to drink their fill for one day, for they gave them drink by measure. Therefore their young children were out of heart, and their women and young men fainted for thirst, and fell down in the streets of the city, and by the passages of the gates, and there was no longer any strength in them. Then all the people assembled to Yusi Yahu, and to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children, and cried with a loud voice, and said before all the elders, Elohim, be judge between us and you, for ye have done us great injury, in that ye have not required peace of the children of Ashur. For now we have no helper, but Elohim has sold us into their hands, that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Now therefore call them unto you, and deliver the whole city for a spoil to the people of Holofernes and to all his army. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them than to die for thirst, for we will be his servants, that our souls may live and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our women, nor our children to die. We take to witness against you the heavens and the earth, and our Elohim and Adonai of our fathers, which punishes us according to our sins and the sins of our fathers, that he do not according as we have said this day. Then there was great weeping with one consent in the midst of the assembly, and they cried unto Yahweh Elohim with a loud voice. Then said Yusiyahu to them, Brethren, be of good courage. Let us yet endure five days in the which space Adonai, Adonai, Eloheinu may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. I'm going to read verse 30 again. Then said Yusiyahu to them, Brethren, be of good courage. Let us yet endure five days in the which space Adonai Eloheinu may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass and there came no help unto us, I will do according to your word. That Sounds like the spirit of Aharon. And he dispersed the people, everyone, to their own charge. And they went unto the walls and towers of their city, 
and sent the women and children into their houses, and they were very low brought in the city. All right, beloved, my children, and you who don't fear Yahuwah, I hope you all are listening. I'm going to stop this video here because I've read this. I will stop, take a short break, and see about continuing to read. I'm not sure if I will, but if I do continue to read, it will be the last chapters of the book of Yehudith, Yudith. Shalom. I love you, beloved. I love you, my babies.